Cybernetic has seen a major overhaul. Whereas previously it was a one-click Ascension perk that would give you a special project called The Flesh is Weak, and then we'll make all your pops cybernetic. No longer is this the case. Instead, something new has come. And this is, of course, the wonderful world of the cybernetic tradition. Now, the cybernetic tradition is a massive rework of how the flesh is weak actually works. A lot of the components of the flesh is weak are still the same. You need to have a ascension perk unlocked in order to get access to this, but instead of getting the flesh is weak special project, you will get access to the aforementioned cybernetic tree. Now, what does the cybernetic tree do? Well, it does a bunch of very interesting things. First of all, the adoption effect has the same as the old Ascension perk. You unlock a special project which grants the cybernetic trait. The cybernetic trait hasn't changed. It is still working exactly the same. It's the knock-on effects that are far more interesting. Transubstation synthesis is basically assimilators light. Whatever pops you have within your empire, you can turn them into cyborgs as you go. Whether or not this is on voluntary basis is a whole different question, but it's there. From there onwards, there are two paths, with the path on the left and the path on the right. We'll start off with the path on the left here. Metabolic reprocessing reduces your cyborg upkeep by 10%. Very straightforward, no major issues there. A perfectly fine little ability. Assembly standards, which unlocks a brand new policy called cybernetic components assembly standards, basically allowing your roboticists to produce new pops. And this is then, of course, part of the policy menu and all the way at the bottom where we find cybernetic components or robotic components. A roboticist will turn alloys into either robots or into cyborgs. So that's really useful because that falls under the wonderful world of the assembly process. So in this particular case, we have robots being assembled or cyborgs being assembled in addition to them growing. So this will su substantially increase your ability to grow pops. However, then there is the area on the right. Integrated anatomy is probably one of the craziest things that has been added to this particular tree because it does some very interesting things. It unlocks cybernetic traits for species modification. Now, at first, that may not seem all that interesting until you go into the wonderful world of the um, genetic engineering side of things. Let's create a template here, shall we? Um, yeah, we now have access to both biological and cybernetic components. This means that we can build such abominations as intelligent and, I don't know, logic engines in parallel to each other. Essentially building a pop that does not only do 10% on the biological side, but also does 10% on the robotic side. And that has massive knock-on effects. I'm not even going to lie, because you can build hyper-specialized pops that, sure, they're probably not going to be as crazy as, say, uh, biological engineer pops or something along those lines, but having access to both trees makes for some absolutely insane modification potential. And this is something we need to keep in mind. And also at the start of the game, because we want to make sure that we don't actually have the intelligent trait at the start of the game, because we do not have the ability to remove positive organic traits in general. So actually starting off with a uh, non trait setup here is probably a good idea because of course, because we go don't go down the biological path, we cannot remove those aforementioned traits. This is why you want to go down the cybernetic chain. But this gets even crazier if we bring in overtuned, because there is nothing stopping you from going cybernetic when you have overtuned. And this has all sorts of knock-on effects, such as, oh, I don't know, having intelligent, having elevated synapses and logic engines stacking on top of each other, giving you plus 30% research output at base without any additional modifiers being added. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Let's do that again, shall we? But in this particular scenario, let's get ourselves industrious let's get ourselves power drills and then top it all off with dedicated miner for a 45 percent bonus in output on this type of pop 
This is essentially biological engineering meeting cyber enhancements for crazy bonuses. This is batshit insanely good. And finally, there is Modular Cybernetics, which adds an additional organic trait to your pop, so you can go even more ham. And on top of that, Modify Species Special Project Cost has been reduced, which means you can do it even quicker. To round it all off, there is the Resources from Cyborg Pops, plus 10%, because clearly they already didn't need more of that, and they get an additional Organic Species Trait Pick. All in all, this means that Cybernetic, was relatively new and no longer a road to Synthetic, is crazy good. But that is not all. The Driven Assimilators get a special version of Cybernetic, which is called the Wonderful World of Organo Machine Interfacing. The thing here is, is that you cannot get this Ascension perk for assimilators until you've assimilated at least 30 pops. Once you've done that, then you can start the process because they have a couple of different things involved here. Whereas standard cyborgs have the ability of assimilating any species, which, you know, that's kind of the whole point. With the assimilators, you can now also assimilate hive minds into your collective so to speak so no longer will you have to deal with hive minds coming in and just killing them off because you can't do anything with them anymore no you can now also assimilate hive minds increasing the number of pops assimilated by year by one as well essentially meaning you can assimilate faster and more pops then all the other pop all the then all the other ones are basically the same except for this one. So this normally was the unlock policy assembly standards for uh, standard cyborg empires. With driven assimilators, on the other hand, they get something new called Crucible Worlds. Now, Crucible Worlds are very interesting. Now, it basically says gain access to a Crucible World uh, colony designation. Technically true, except it is a decision that you need to make on the planet itself. What it does is it will give you these special new drones on the planet that basically give you some rather crazy output in terms of pop growth. No longer will it be focused on generating robots, but based on growing your cyborgs, which you then can distribute into your empire. So how good are these drones? Oh, I don't know. One drone gives a pop growth speed of plus 25%. Yeah, plus 25%. You get two of these. So you get 50% pop growth. To put this into perspective, the Gene Clinic, or at least the advanced version of that, gives you a maximum boost of 20 max. And again, this is at base, so you could add some other bonuses on top of this to get even better pop growth in order to go completely ham with this. Crucible Worlds in by themselves also give a pop growth bonus of 10% on top of that. So 60% pop growth. Sure, there is a bunch of negatives. Pop upkeep will be increased by 10% and resources will be reduced, but it doesn't matter because you just want to crank out organic pops and distribute them over your empire as fast as you can. And considering driven assimilators haven't really had all that much love recently, this is a very nice little bonus for them to get. Are there any graphics involved here? No, there are no graphical changes to the overall setup, but it does not mean that this is not a great little addition to driven assimilators. Finally, the biggest winners in all of this are the cyber hives. Yes, hive minds will now have the ability to go cybernetic as well as what they've had access to before, which means that hive minds has got a whole lot more powerful. They got a couple of different things, however, and one of which is the synaptic sub processing, which basically reduces empire size from districts, essentially allowing you to kind of oversee the uh, additional effects of empire size, such as tradition cost and technology costs as soon as you get this. Plus, in addition, if you are in fact a devourer, then you don't get transubstantiation synthetics. No, no, you get organ harvesting, where you can essentially um, harvest the organs of the pops that you are purging and grow your own population as such. 
overall, though, having the hive mind uh, robotics being added as well adds so much more love to this because now you can actually play as the Borg proper. And isn't that fun? So what do you think? The flesh is weak. It's now a standalone and no longer a path to synthetics. Is it strong enough to stand by itself? Is the ability to add the cybernetic traits for modification to your empire powerful enough? I don't know. Our crucible worlds may be quite good. The ability to simulate hive minds is this nice. Well, let me know down below in the comments and see how happy you are that you can now build cyborgs that are not just slowed down versions of synthetics. Now, in the meantime, though, on your screen right now, you will see a link to the Psionics video. Yes, the new Psionics are here, and I'm looking forward to see how they all pan out. We'll see you there, and, well, until next time, take good care of yourselves, and thank you to my patrons, and, of course, keep putting drills on those arms.